Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about operating systems, and I mentioned it a few times in the two of the last videos we talked about, but today we're going to go a little bit more in depth and show you the differences between the three main operating systems. So before we go too far, we do need to know what exactly an operating system is and what it does for us. So there's three main functions of an operating system, no matter which one you're using. They're all going to communicate with some type of hardware. And what we mean by hardware is a keyboard, a mouse, a printer, a monitor, things like that. They're going to manage your files and applications. So whatever you're using a computer for, whatever programs you're using, whatever files you're accessing, documents, Word files, pictures, anything like that would fall under here. And then the last bit is it's going to provide a graphical user interface. Now to us as an end user, the first two communicate with hardware and provide application and file management. Those are generally the same on every operating system. As an end user, again, we don't really see the difference in what's going on on the back end, but what we see is that graphical user interface, also called a GUI. Um, this is what's different between the major operating systems and where people differ on what they prefer. So what I want to do is show you through uh, the desktops of the main operating systems and what's a little bit different about them and what you can expect as an end user for what to come. So the first one I want to talk about is Microsoft Windows and mainly because this is the most renowned operating system everybody generally has touched a Microsoft Windows computer in some way shape or form. Um, they, they started out and the ones I'm going to cover are the main ones for um, end users where we are today. You're still going to see machines out there with Windows XP. You may have one, you may be on one right now. Um, they're trying to phase this out and the one step they did to want to get rid of Windows XP was implement Windows Vista. So when Windows Vista came out it was, one, it was a step above XP. Um, it really wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. It's just it required a lot of resources and a very powerful computer for you to actually get what it was made for out of it. Um, that quickly got replaced with Windows 7. Uh, Windows 7 is by far the most used version of operating system for Windows out today. Um, there's a chart I'll link in the article in the description that says operating systems in use for the world and this is one of the top ones. Over 40% of people use Windows 7 across the globe. Um, but coming in the next month they're going to want to replace Windows 7 with Windows 8. And the next screenshot shows two versions of Windows 8. And when I say two versions it's really the same thing but the one on the left shows what's known as this Metro Start screen and they're trying to make it look a lot like the Windows phones and the Windows tablets that are coming out so they can share this user interface with the tiles and the different colors and things like that. A lot of people don't really like that. It hasn't went over very well um, in the communities and some people love it. To each his own, if you like it you can leave it and you can use it but if you don't like it you can um, disable it and use the Windows 8 regular desktop that looks exactly like Windows 7. Now, I would encourage you, if you're on the fence about upgrading or not sure, Windows 8 is great, and it's going to be a lot better than Windows 7, even a Metro theme to side, because they've made a lot of changes on the back end that we don't necessarily see as users that makes Windows 8 run a lot smoother and more efficient than Windows 7. And it also requires a less powerful machine to do the same thing. Which brings us to the next major operating system, which is known as the Apple Mac OS X. I'm going to cover three, just because these are the three that are probably still out there in use today. Um, some of you may still be using Snow Leopard. This was the version 10.6. Um, I, I, I honestly do not own a Mac PC so, or a Mac computer, so I don't know too much about these. But the main difference is they have a dock at the bottom, which equivalents to Windows Start menu. And at the top is where you get all of your property menus for each application or each file you're working in. Um, the next version was Lion. Uh, Lion, um, a lot more upgrades up above Snow Leopard, but it was replaced here within the last few months by Mountain Lion. And Mountain Lion is the newest one that's out. If you go buy a Mac computer today, this is what you're going to get, this uh, Mountain Lion version 10.8. And I have a link down here at the bottom I'm actually going to share it at the end of the presentation. There's a link that shows, it's a web-based tutorial of what Mac looks like so you can get a feel for it to see if it's something you may be interested in. And the last operating system I want to talk about is Linux. Linux has literally hundreds of different distributions. You can go actually download a version of Linux, change it, make uh, 
add some applications, remove some applications, move stuff around on the desktop that you like, and name it your own distribution. So really, anybody anywhere can have a version of Linux that's their own. And there's uh, four really popular ones that I want to share. The first one is Debian. Um, Debian and the next one, Fedora, are both very popular. They kind of, I'm going to go back real quick, they share a lot of the same things. They just have a lot of programs and applications different between each one. The next one is Mint. If you're more of a Windows user, Mint would probably be the version of Linux that you would prefer, just because if you, you see it has its own start menu that resembles the Windows start uh, screen. And it's the more, uh, I don't know what to say, but it's the most version of Linux I've seen to this majority of what's similar to Windows. And the last is Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is probably the biggest version or the bit, biggest distribution of Linux. And on their website, they actually have a web-based tour you can take as well. And I actually wanted to show you this as well as the Apple tour. So when we go online to Ubuntu's website, backslash tour.en, because I'm in the English version, we can take a guided tour and show ourselves around. I'm going to show you around real quick just to show you what they have. So this is a basic um, Ubuntu desktop. Top right corner, you have your power button, your clock. If you're on Wi-Fi or wired, email, Bluetooth. Down in the bottom, you'll have four little icons to where you can have four different desktops. It's, it's hard to see in this, but you would have basically have four start screens, and you could have something open in each one. Over here, this is the similar to the start menu. You could type click on the start menu and you could search recent applications or files download center basically search if I wanted to open up Firefox there's Firefox web browser right here so this is more like a dock um, here's a home folder this is where all of your folders are going to be for your computer if you plug in a flash drive it'll pop up over here obviously we have Firefox we need some type of web browser they have the software center this is where you would go download um, applications for Linux and there's a very huge Linux community so if you need any software to do anything they probably have it somewhere in here um, there's some programs I'm going to talk about later throughout the year of open source programs that you can access and use to do certain things with um, but they also come installed with what's known as LibreOffice and the writer is very similar to Microsoft Word you can come in here and use this as a um, excuse me oops uh, text editor and edit something in Word, save it as a Word file. The, la the next one would be Impress, and this is just like PowerPoint. You can create PowerPoint presentations and things like that. They have something very similar to Excel spreadsheet. You can type, um, I keep clicking on it, and it's not clickable, sorry. And this is what I talked about in my last video, Ubuntu One. So they have Ubuntu One already integrated within this operating system to where you can share files throughout your uh, web-based program we saw or through another Windows computer, smartphone, things like that. And then the last thing would be this Thunder, Thunderbird Mail, which is a program created by the same people who created Firefox. And this is a way to get rid of Outlook and maybe import your Gmail or Yahoo Mail into this email client. So that's a little bit of the Ubuntu tour. The, one, the other one I wanted to show you was the Mac OS S tour, and I will link both of these in the description. But when you go to this, you have to make sure you know that this is not an Apple product. They're not affiliated. It's just um, an example of what the Mac OS might look like. So you have to click here to enter. It's gonna boot up a full screen, and then it's gonna want you to type in your name. So I'm gonna type 41Wheat, why not? So when we log in, it's going to bring us to a basic Mac OS desktop. There's the dock on the bottom of the screen. Um, they have system preferences. You could click and, well, it's not fully functional. I apologize. But this is where you would change your background, change your desktop, your icons, things like that. They have sticky notes. Um, I think, oh, sorry about that iTunes I'm sure you're all familiar with iTunes because that's what you use for music and then the finder would be like to search through your documents and things like that and look for programs and files so that's a little bit about Mac OS X we talked a little bit about Linux operating systems talk a little bit about Windows if you have any specific questions for any of those I'll do my best to help but um, I don't have as much experience I just wanted to kind of show you what was out there give you an idea of what there is out there to offer 
And I had also mentioned this. If you ever buy a Windows computer and you would rather this version of Linux or one of the others that we've talked about, um, either Mint or Fedora or Debian, any of those, you could buy a computer and tell them you have your own operating system and get cash back or get money off towards your computer if you don't have Windows installed on it. I'm not sure if Apple will do that. And one thing I do want to point out about Apple is uh, before the presentation started, we talked about communicating with hardware. And Apple is the only company that actually creates hardware and software, or they purchase hardware specifically for their software that they're implementing. So I mentioned this in the video about laptops. Apple computers, you generally don't have as much hardware, software communication errors as you do of the others, just because they have to update the drivers to focus on those. So um, if you have any, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good day.